American B-1B bombers have been deployed to South Korea to take part in the ongoing combined air force exercise. Already hundreds of aircraft, including two dozen stealth fighters, are in the mix. Kim Hyun-bin gets us better acquainted with the massive drill dubbed Vigilant Ace. The U.S. has deployed B-1B bombers to the Korean Peninsula to take part in the Joint Seoul Washington Air Combat Drills. South Korean military officials said on Wednesday that the bomber station in Guam arrived to conduct a bombing drill with South Korea's fighter jets. The U.S. usually deploys B-1B in pairs after North Korea's provocations in a show of force or on routine training missions. The last deployment of B-1B bombers came in early November ahead of U.S. President Donald Trump's regional trip. Seoul and Washington have been conducting a massive air combat drill known as Vigilant Ace. Over 200 warplanes are taking part, including two dozen stealth fighter jets. Six F-22s and six F-35s have been deployed to the Korean Peninsula, marking the first time the highly advanced jets have cruised the skies over South Korea at the same time. Other U.S. assets include two B-1B bombers and six Growler electronic warfare jets, as well as dozens of F-15s and F-16s. South Korea has deployed 90 fighter jets, including its F-15 and F-850 fighters. The exercises are scheduled to run through Friday. U.S. bombers flying in South Korea. Now, this latest show of force, of course, follows uh, North Korea testing a new missile that could threaten the entire U.S. mainland. Kitty Logan is live for us in London with our look at your international headlines this morning. Good morning, Kitty. Good morning, Heather. Well, China is calling for restraint over North Korea as those U.S. and South Korean military drills continue throughout this week. A U.S. supersonic bomber flew over the Korean peninsula today as part of this large combined exercise. It took off in Guam, joining hundreds of other U.S. and South Korean fighter jets in a clear warning to North Korea. Now, around 12,000 U.S. troops are also participating. North Korea claims these annual drills are pushing the region to the brink of war. that Kim Jong-un better appreciate that uh, Barack Obama is no longer president and the possibility of American use of military force against North Korea's nuclear capability is real. This is obviously coming amid heightened tensions between the U.S. and North Korea. How is the, the president's strategy working? Obviously, we've been reporting on the, um, the words exchanged, the rhetoric between the two world leaders. How is his strategy playing out in your view? Well, I think he had uh, a very bad hand he was dealt with when he came into office on North Korea, on the Iranian nuclear program while we're on the subject uh, because of 25 years of failure to stop both of those countries from getting across the finish line to having deliverable nuclear weapons. So I think President Trump saw that if there is a peaceful way out here, it comes in China using its unique leverage over North Korea. I think he made that point to Xi Jinping in Beijing. I have to say there's no evidence the Chinese have gotten the message. So I think you're getting very close to a binary decision. Either we leave North Korea with nuclear weapons, which I personally find unacceptable, or we've got to look at military force. But to your point, when you sat down here, the clock is ticking. Time is running out. What, is that, what does uh, the timing of all this look like to you? 
Well, from all that we can see, North Korea is very close to a point where they can deliver thermonuclear weapons to any target they want in the con continental United States. Obviously, once they actually achieve that point, the odds of us doing anything militarily approach zero mm. because of the risk of retaliation against us. So there isn't a lot of time to fool around here. There's not much of a margin of error if we're going to use military force. And if we don't, then you have a North Korea that can extort and blackmail the United States and sell these technologies wow. around the world. This is a five-day exercise that has been conducted annually since 1976. The North Koreans have always hated this joint exercise. It is designed to help defend South Korea in the event of a North Korean attack. And it's interesting, it was canceled from 1994 to 1996 when North Korea agreed to a nuclear deal, but the, the exercises were resumed when North Korea cheated on that deal. And it's clearly brought on new meaning. And do you believe that we are headed towards at least, you know, limited use of military force? Well, I'm, I'm concerned that sanctions and diplomacy aren't going to work, and it may be necessary for the United States to back up its warnings to North Korea with some form of mil limited military force, maybe shooting down missiles, possibly a naval blockade. Mm -hmm. I, I'm worried we may have to take that step. It's risky, but my concern is North Korea is eventually going to use this large nuclear and missile arsenal uh, maybe to try to reunify the Korean Peninsula yeah. on its terms. And you are not the only one that's concerned about that. We have this from Senator Lindsey Graham on Sunday where he called on um, Americans or the Pentagon to evacuate Americans in South Korea. Listen to what he said. It's crazy to send uh, spouses and children to South Korea given the provocation of North Korea. So I want them to stop sending dependents and I think it's now time to start moving American dependents out of South Korea. Yeah, about 28,500 U.S. soldiers there. Does that concern you? It does. And look, no one wants to talk about war. War will be a, a horrific uh, a consequence for South Korea. But I think these uh, weapons by North Korea eventually will be used. I think we have to put a marker down to make it clear to North Korea that we're not going to tolerate these weapons that not only threaten the existence of South Korea, but also threaten the United States. So then the question is, is North Korea getting help with their nuclear development, their rockets? Are they getting help from China or Russia? There was this ex-NATO commander that warned about that over the weekend and that warned that they're moving too quickly to actually be doing it alone. This is being hotly debated among experts. The U.S. intelligence community believes North Korea probably did this indigenously, maybe by stealing technology, maybe by using North Korean students who studied in China. I think there's a strong possibility that, that assistance was received from China or Russia and possibly Iran financed bringing in foreign experts to work in North Korea to help both the Iranian and North Korean nuclear missile programs. And why would they want to do that? What would benefit them? Well, concerning the Iranians, they would like to advance their missile and nuclear programs too, and they want to pretend going along with this terrible 2015 nuclear deal. There's been close collaboration between the Iranian and North Korean missile programs for many years, and there's many experts who think there has been collaboration on their nuclear programs as well. It really is scary that we're actually having to talk about this. And, and as you said at the very beginning, we certainly hope that, um, you know, talking about it, talking it out, and deliberations can help and that we can avoid war.